Uh, today we will hear, uh, continue to hear the answer uh, given by Sukhdev Goswami to Parishad Maharaj about the different ages. Specifically, he will dive into the Kali Yuga before uh, he gives a solution. Also, that Parishad Maharaj asked for it. So we can pay attention to the problems and the solution also today. Yeah. Hare Krishna Prabhu, whenever you are ready, you can start Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Hare Krishna Devotee, Dhanavad Pranam, Jai Shila Prabhupada. Um, let me invoke some prayer. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayana Namaskritya Naramjaiva Narutama Devim Sarsati Vyasim Tatojaya Dudiriate Nashtapayasha Abhidheshu Nishnityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavate Uttamashloke Bhaktir Bhavati Nashtake. Today we are going to read from Canto 12th, Chapter 3. Uh, chapter name is Sabhumi Gita from text 26 to text 52. So, yeah, so text 26 the material modes, goodness, passion, and ignorance whose permutations are observed within a person's mind are set into motion by the power of time. Text 27. When the mind, intelligence, and senses are solidly, solidly fixed in the mode of goodness, that time should be understood as Satya Yuga, the age of truth. People can take pleasure in knowledge and austerity. O most intelligent, text 28, O most intelligent one, when the conditioned souls are devoted to, the, to their duty, but have ulterior motives and seek personal prestige, you should understand such a situation to be the age of Treta, in which the function of passion are prominent. Text 29. When the greed, dissatisfaction, false pride, hypocrisy, and envy become prominent, along with attraction for selfish activity, such a time is the age of Dwapar, dominated by the mixed mode of passion and ignorance. Text 30, when there is a predominance of cheating, lying, sloth, sleepliness, sleeplessness, <clears throat> violence, depression, lamentation, bewilderment, fear, and poverty, that is the age of Kali, the age of the mode of ignorance. Text 31, th text 31. because of the bad qualities of the age of Kali, human beings will become short-sighted, unfortunate, gluttonous lustful and the poverty strict striking the woman becoming unchaste will freely wander from one man to next <clears throat> text 32 cities will be dominated by the thieves the vedas will be contaminated by the, by the speculative interpretation of atheist political leaders will virtually consume the citizen and so-called priests and intellectuals will be devotee of their bellies and genitals Text 33, the brahmacharis will fail to execute their vows and become generally unclean and householders will become beggars. The vana prastha will live in the villages and the sannyasi will become greedy for work. Text 34, women will become much smaller in size and they will eat too much and have more children than they can properly take care of and lose all shyness. They will always speak harshly and will exhibit qualities of thievery and decide an unrestrained audacity. Text 35. Businessmen will engage in petty com commerce and earn their money by cheating. Even when there is no emergency, people will consider any degraded occupation quite acceptable. Text 36. Servant will abandon a master who has lost his wealth. Even if the master is saintly person of exemplary character, master will, master will abandon an incapacitated incap servant, even if that servant has been in the family for generations. Cows will be abandoned or killed when they stop giving milk. In the Kali Yuga, text 37, in the Kali Yuga, men will be rushed and controlled by women. They will reject their father, brothers, other relatives and friends, and will instead associate with the sister and brothers of their wives. Thus, their conception of friendship uh, will be based exclu exclusively on sexual ties. Text 38. Uncultured men will accept charity 
on behalf of the Lord and will earn their livelihood by making a show of austerity and wearing a mendicant dress. Those who know nothing about religion will mount a high seat and presume to speak on religious principle. Text 39 and 40. In the age of Kali, people's mind will always be agitated. They will become emasicated by feminine and taxation, my dear king, and will always be disturbed by fear of drought. They will lack adequate clothing, food, drink, and will be unable to properly rest and have sex or bathe themselves and will have no ornaments to decorate their body. In fact, the people of Kali Yuga will gradually come to appear like ghostly and haunted creatures. Text 41. In the Kali Yuga, man will be developed a hatred for each other, even over a few coins, giving up all friendly relations. They will be ready to lose their own life and kill even their own relatives. Text 42. Men will no longer protect their elderly parents, their children, or their respectable wife. Thoroughly degraded, they will care only to satisfy their own bellies and genitals. Text 43. O king, in the age of Kali, people's intelligence will be diverted by atheism, and they will almost never offer sacrifice to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the supreme spiritual master of the universe. Although the great personality who control the three worlds all bow down to the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. The pity and miserable human being of this age will not do so. Text 44. Terrified about to die, a man collapsed on his bed. Although his voice is flattering and he is hardly conscious of what he is saying, if he utters the holy name of the Supreme Lord, he can be freed from the reaction of his fruitive birth and achieve the supreme destination. But still people in the age of Kali will not worship the Supreme Lord. Text 45. In the Kali Yuga, the objects, places, and even individual personalities are all polluted. And Almighty Person of God, at however, can remove all such contamination from the life of ones who fix the Lord within his mind. Text 46. If a person hears about glory, glorifies, meditates upon worship, or simply offer great respect to the Supreme Lord, who is situated within the heart, the Lord will remove from his mind the contamination accumulated during many thousands of lifetimes. Text 47. Just as fire applied to gold, remove any discoloration caused by the trace of other material, metal. The Lord Vishnu within the heart purifies the mind of the yogis. Text 48. By once engaging in the process of demigod worship, austerity, breath control, compassion, bathing in holy place, strict vows, charity, chanting of various mantras, one's mind cannot attain the same absolute purification as that achieved when the unlimited personality of Godhead appear within one's heart. Text 49. Therefore, O king, endeavor with all your might to fix the Supreme Lord Keshava within your heart. Maintain this concentration upon the Lord and at the time of that, you will certainly attain the Supreme Destination. Text 50. My dear king, the personality of Godhead is the ultimate controller. He is the supreme soul and the supreme shelter of all being. When meditated upon by those about to die, he reveals to them their own eternal spiritual identity. Text 51. My dear king, although Kali Yuga is an ocean of fault, there is still one good quality about this age. Simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, one can become free from the material bondage and be promoted to the transcendental kingdom. Text 52. Whatever result was obtained in Satyuga my, by meditating on Vishnu, in Treta Yuga by performing sacrifice, and in Dwapar Yuga by serving the lotus feet, can be obtained in Kali Yuga by simply chanting the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Thus end the Bhakti Vedanta purport uh, of uh, Canto 12, Chapter 3, um, Bhumi Gita, Hare Krishna Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Prabhu. So it's a nice chapter. Uh, that's a nice conclusion of the chapter also. So basically, we heard the context of this chapter is that Parishan Maharaj asked the questions after the pre in the previous chapters. Uh, we heard the descriptions of how uh, Kalyuga is gradually degrading in terms of the consciousness, in terms of how Kshatriyas becoming uh, Sudras like that. And then 
not uh, living their life according to principles of spiritual life, to progress in spiritual life like that. So, Parishan Maharaj asked questions, uh, primarily two sets of questions. One is he asked about uh, uh, Sukhadeva Goswami to describe different ages, uh, Satya Yuga, Taita Yuga, Dvapara Yuga, Kali Yuga. And he asked specifically, uh, considering all the bad qualities of Kali Yuga that will influence people, what can they do? How can they be helped? How can their contamination to be, be removed like that? That Kaliyuga contamination can be removed like that. Specifically, that, that is the word used. So, so we in this today's section, we'll see the, both of the aspects. Uh, because Krishna, Sukhadi Goswami described yesterday, already characteristics of Satya Yuga, Sudhita Yuga, Dvapara Yuga, and is going to the Kaliyuga. So, we started Kaliyuga description yesterday. So, we'll further describe the degradation of Kaliyuga characteristics first. So, that way, it's very clear. Kali Yuga has really contaminations. And we, we understand the importance of practicing uh, Krishna consciousness like that. And then he gives a solution, which is to chant the holy name primarily, the most important thing. And then also uh, combined with uh, emphasis is given on meditation of Krishna in the heart or uh, remembering Krishna in the mind like that. That emphasis also is given in the last section. So primarily emphasizing on the holy name. So we'll go to the, go to that. So when we are reading through uh, scriptures and when we see especially uh, some good qualities that are desirable for devotion, we need to um, get inspired to cultivate those good qualities for, for improving devotion. Similarly, when we hear about bad qualities that are uh, not favorable for devotion service, then we should uh, strive to um, remove those bad qualities from our life like that. Of course, with the primary focus being on devotion service. With that focus, with that purpose, for devotion service sake, we can acquire good qualities and uh, remove bad qualities like that. So, so when we are hearing this description also, we can see, do I have this bad quality? I need to strive towards removing this bad quality like that. Now, going through the verses, 36 verse. Now, after describing the different different ages, Satya, Treta, Dwapara and Kali Yuga, in terms of their characteristics, characteristics and how people are there in this age like that. Now, uh, interestingly, Sukhde Goswami turns towards how these different ages are characteristics by different material modes like that. So, to give that topic, he starts with defining briefly material modes. He says material modes like goodness, passion, and ignorance, whose permutations, that means different combinations, are observed within a person's mind are set in motion by the power of time we're discovering. In the purport, uh, the description given of the ages in terms of the modes. Basically, in this case, we can also deduce this based on the characteristics we heard of each of the age already. Satyuga is predominantly made of mode of goodness. That means mode of goodness is prominent. That doesn't mean other modes do not exist. That means only th that characteristics are predominantly existing like that. That means there may be still demonic people in Satya Yuga uh, in few places like that. That is quoted in the purport, especially refers to Vishwana Chakravatakur. But the predominance is what he's talking about. Exceptions will always be there. Then, uh, Treta Yuga is a predominantly mode of passion. That means some people will be there with mode of goodness predominantly, saintly persons will be there. Some demonic will also be there. Similarly, Dwapar Yuga is predominantly mode of passion and ignorance combined is described. And Kali Yuga is predominantly mode of ignorance and characteristics we can observe everywhere. So, okay, that's the main point in this purport. Now going to 27th verse, Sukhdeva Goswami is describing, uh, um, again, elaborating on each of these points. What we heard in the purport already, is, is actually coming up versus. That's what is going to describe. In the Satyuga, people's mind, intelligence, and senses are solid, fixed, and mode of goodness. And such people, what do they take pleasure in? They take pleasure in knowledge and austerities. In fact, Krita, a Satyuga or Krita Yuga, Krita word means performed, it seems, performed or executed. That means people will perform religious duties for higher perfection, spiritual perfection, not to get something for them. So basically, one of the key characteristics described is they take pleasure in knowledge and austerity. 
So, and this subtle state of existence is possible for one who has conquered sex desire. The purport talks about like that. So it's important to follow regular principles or to situate in mode of goodness. That's the point here. Now, uh, text 28. Now he describes about the Treta Yuga. He says, uh, when conditioned souls are devoted to their duties, but for what? For ulterior motives and seek personal prestige. Satyuga, they were doing it for higher purpose, spiritual perfection. Treta Yuga, they are doing it for their own prestige. And that is the Treta Yuga is discovered, where passionate, mode of passion is prominent. In the next two verse, uh, Dwapar Yuga is described, where when greed, dissatisfaction, false pride, hypocrisy, and envy become prominent, with along with attraction for selfish activities. That is the key characteristics. Attraction is for selfish activities. Such a time is the age of Dwapara, which is a mix of mode of passion and ignorance. Now, Kali Yuga, next verse, 30th verse. When this predominance of cheating, lying, sloth, sleeping, uh, violence, sleepiness, violence, depression, lamentation, bewilderment, fear, and poverty, that is age of Kali, in the age of mode of ignorance is described. People are devoted to gross materialism. Uh, with hardly any practice for self relation like that. That is the majority, not necessarily uh, everyone. Now, text 31. Uh, now, after describing the three, four ages in terms of the modes, middle modes, and how the characteristics will be, now Sudhi Goswami is describing the bad qualities of Kali Yuga specifically. That means he's shifting towards the second uh, part of the question, which is how to get people be helped in Kali Yuga. But before going there, his glory is uh, taking a deep dive of Kali Yuga because that's what he's going to talk about now. He says some of the bad qualities of Kali Yuga. Human beings will become short-sighted. It means not thinking far. Unfortunate, glutinous, lustful, and poverty-stricken. The woman becoming unchaste will freely wander from one man to the next. The purport clarifies all this is happening because of the bodily identification, bodily conception of life like that. And then people are thinking, I'm going to become free in terms of body only, not the soul. Uh, so that is why that is causing more and more ignorant activities. Especially the hint is given in the purport about the women wanting to become free in terms of the body. And then that's how they get taken advantage of by other men like that. Now text 32. The cities are being criticized here in the, by the scriptures. They go directly. He says cities will be dominated by thieves. Uh, purport, is say, purport is clarifying that point. How cities are unsafe. Many times downtown areas are considered unsafe for, to, for anybody to go. Because somebody will mug them. Somebody will uh, do some violence to them like that. And then other things is um, cities are also filled with cult, cult, cutthroat businessmen like that is indicated. Why they are described as cutthroat? Not because they're uh, taking life, essentially, but they're taking something valuable. What do they do? They enthusiastically convince people to purchase and consume useless or even harmful things also, using the marketing and all those things. Examples given in the purport is like eating beef, tobacco, liquor. These are promoted with wonderful advertisements. And that way, actually, they're harmful for people. but Businessmen are trying to, you know, you probably know, marketing is a whole different branch of education, actually. And there's a lot of research done in marketing that sees how people, when they see this kind of things, they will be attracted. What will help them to keep something in the long term in the memory? What will help create hankering in people? What will help them wanting to come back again and again like that? So many researches are done to convince us to buy and consume things that are useless or even harmful also like that is describing. Then the verse itself talks about how Vedas will be contaminated by speculative inter interpretations of atheists. So Parpoda is giving example how people distort the uh, knowledge of the Vedas. For example, even in, even in universities, people teach Hinduism as a course. But what do they learn? They learn, oh, Hinduism is polytheistic. There are many gods like that. 
what you purport is clarifying that all gods are coming from one god. That is the actual monotheistic is the real thing for Sanatana Dharma. But the mis, um, misrepresenting Hinduism, like that is described. And then political leaders will virtually consume citizens. And priests and intellectuals will be devotees of their bellies and genitals. That means they are doing their job of priest for getting food and they want to enjoy something. That's why they're doing. Again, there will be exceptions, but generally that is the case, is saying. Sukhde Goswami. Now it describes how people are not practicing their ashrama properly. Brahmachari ashram, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, and Sanyasha ashram. Brahmacharis will fail to execute their vows and become generally unclean. So what are the main vows of Brahmachari? To be remain celibate. But in these days, we see uh, people who are not married yet, they engage in the sex life also. And then they keep their surroundings unclean, not so clean like that. Purport is clarifying how student residences are among the dirtiest places on earth like that. And householders will become beggars. Why is that important? Householders are meant to give charity. For what? For a higher purpose, for spiritual cultivation, for example, or spiritual spread, spread of Krishna consciousness like that. But instead, Purport is clarifying, somebody goes to book distribution and asks them for donation. They say, I wish somebody gives me a donation like that. So that's what is being clarified in the purport. That means they're not charitable. Instead, they want to get money like that. Then, next is Vanaprastas uh, live in the wages, villages. Generally, purport clarifies at the age of 50 or close to that, one is supposed to retire to sacred places, holy places, and, per and uh, perform austerity and uh, strive for spiritual perfection. That means simple life and spiritual perfection is striving. More, more, life, more life, time of the life, they care for spiritual perfection at uh, higher ages, older ages like that. But instead of going to sacred places and living there and doing focusing on spiritual perfection, people are still living in the same place, villages with their families like that. That is the point being described in the Kaliuga. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that means they are not... Uh, acknowledging the actual purpose of life. And that means it's certainly an offense against God, like that is described in the purport. Now, uh, going to the last ashram, Sanyas ashram, Sanyasis will become greedy for wealth, is described. So they will say that, oh, I'm a great Sanyasi, give me money, like that. That is the point being made here. Uh, of course, there are exceptions, but that is generally predominant things in the Kali Yuga, like that is described. Now, after describing how Kaliuga qualities are degrading, some more will come now. Text 34 focus on uh, uh, how women will become much smaller in size and they will eat too much. They have more children than they can properly take care of. They lose all shyness. They will always speak harshly and will exhibit qualities of thievery, deceit and unrestrained audacity. So these are not so desirable qualities for women, but we observe them in Kaliuga is describing. Then he goes back to the businessman. How he says, they engage in petty commerce and earn their money by cheating. Even when there is no emergency, people will consider any degraded occupation quite acceptable. Remember, in the seventh canto is described how Brahmana should do this activities only, Kshatriya should do these activities only like that, Vaisha should do these activities only. But in case of emergency, what can they do like that is described. But now people don't consider this pious activity or this non-pious activity like that. They take any job they want, like that is describing. Examples are given in purport, like modern victims places, like coal mines, slaughterhouses, steel mills, deserts, floating oil rigs, submarines, and other equally abominable situations. They are also taking jobs there like that is describing. And business businessmen will cheat and lie, uh, so that way they can do their business well. Now going to thirty six, servants will abandon a master who has lost his wealth, even though that master is saintly person of exemplary character. In Vedic culture, the master is maintaining us, has been maintaining us for years, even though he's not able to maintain. Now the servant used to serve it seems. But now that is an unheard of. If somebody doesn't give money, why should we serve them? Like that. That is the only point cared for. Similarly, opposite is also true. Masters. Masters will abandon an incapacitated servant. Even if that servant has been 
in the family for generations. Somebody is serving a family so much, but suppose some accident happened, they lost their leg or something like happened, they just discard them. They don't care for them. But in Vedic culture, master used to care for them. One example is about cows. How oh, when cows stop giving milk, masters will take care of the cows, not kill them. But now it's happening when because cows are not giving any more any more money for me, then why should I take care of them? Is loss only like that? That is a, is all in terms of money, money like that. But purport is clarifying how cow is like a mother because we drink her milk, so we should take care of her like that. And the next verse, thirty seventh verse, Kaliuga men will be wretched and controlled by women. And they'll reject their immediate relationships like fathers, brothers, and other relatives or friends. But they make association with uh, uh, wives, uh, brothers, wives, sisters like that, uh, leaving their person, original family basically. That their conception of friendship will be based exclusively on sexual ties. Like that. Then the 38th verse, uncultured men will accept charity on behalf of the Lord and will earn their livelihood by making a show of austerity and wearing a mendicant's dress. That means people wear external show up uh, sometimes and uh, they say, oh, please give me money. This will use it for Lord like that. But they will use it for themselves like that. That's a cheating propensity is there in some people like that. And then those who don't know much about religion properly, perfect knowledge of religion, they still sit in a high seat and speak on religious principles like that. that is, this talk about bogus gurus, bogus swamis, bogus priests like that who are really motivated by their self-interest, not for caring for others like that. Now, text 39 to 40, um, in the Kali Yuga, people's age, minds will be always be agitated. They'll be emaciated by famine and taxation. They'll always be disturbed by fear of drought. They'll lack adequate clothing, food and drink. will be unable to properly rest, uh, have sex or bathe themselves, and will have no ornaments to decorate their bodies. Um, People will appear like ghostly, haunted creatures. This is describing, purport is clarifying, this is already happening in some part of the world right now. Not that it will happen later on in the Kali Yuga like that. It will be spreading everywhere now like that. That's what is being described here. Some places we have famine like that, right? Too much taxes. Because there's no proper food, clothing like that. All that situations are there in some parts of the world. They're only spreading now. And as the Kali Yuga progresses, that will increase. Text 41 describes Kaliuga men will develop a hatred for each other, even over a few coins, little money, they'll fight. And giving up all friendly relations, they'll be ready to lose their own lives and kill their relatives like that. And men 42, men will no longer protect their elderly parents, children, or their respectable wives. In Vedic culture, these are considered dependents and these are considered weaker section of society, and they need really need protection because they're depending on us children, old people, and then uh, women like that. But they're not taking care of the production of them. Thoroughly degraded, they will only care to satisfy their bellies and genital disease craving. That means how elderly parents, many of us don't take care of them. They even send them to uh, old age homes like that is described. And young children are, are not taking care properly. That's why they're doing suicides like that. And uh, because children are born without uh, intention of having children, then they will not be cared for properly, like that is described in the purport. Now, text 43, in Kaliga, people's intelligence will be diverted, diverted by atheism, and they will almost never offer sacrifice to the Krishna, Supreme Lord. Uh, although great personalities of the world, control the world are going down, general people don't bow down because of the atheistic nature, like that is described. So now these are all characteristics of Kaliga. Uh, now going to yeah I think few more verses before the solution starts he says terrified about to die a man collapses on his bed although his voice is faltering and is hardly conscious of what he's saying yeah now the solution is coming when such a person who is about to die even that person when he utters the holy name of the Lord he can be freed from the reactions of all the fruity work he has done and he achieves the supreme destination. So, holy name glories are described now here. So, this, this section is nicer again, sex, focusing on the holy name and devotion. Sorry. So, 
in the kali yuga many things are polluted objects places and even individual personalities are polluted but um, supreme lord can remove all contamination from the life of one who fixes supreme lord in his mind when you fix krishna in our mind by process of chanting for example and by hearing past times by hearing about krishna and his nature and qualities we can remove all contaminations in our life same thing if a person hears about krishna kirtana shravanam glorifies kirtanam meditates upon shravan kirtana vishnu smaranam like that meditating upon worships or simply offers great respect to supreme lord that means obeisances mm, the lord will remove from his mind the contamination accumulated during many thousands of lifetimes remember this is a question parishu mari was asking so the answer is do devotion service to lord starting with hearing about the lord Uh, glorifying the name and qualities and pastimes of the Lord, and then remember the Lord like that. That will remove all contaminations. He is describing, and is further explaining with analogy. Just as the fire, uh, when applied to gold, removes any discoloration caused by the traces of other metals. So similarly, Lord Vishnu within the heart purifies the minds of the yogis. The point being made in the purport is, yogis may think, "Oh, I did so many austerities, I became purified." Actually, that purification is the result of Krishna in the heart. That is the point being made here. So next is people engage in the process of devi god worship, austerities, breath control, compassion, bathing in holy places, charity, chanting of various mantras. Some people don't have faith in one mantra. They want to chant Hari Hanuman Chalisa. They want to chant this. They want to chant that. Like that. That is what is being described. They cannot attain same level of purification. as that achieved by when unlimited personality of godhead appears in within one's heart that one personality of godhead when we worship that is sufficient to give tremendous purification like that is described now he is encouraging so parishmar sukade goswami is encouraging parishmar in the last few verses now because remember this is the last few hours of parishmar's life before he goes he says endeavor with all your might to fix the supreme lord keshava within your heart maintain this concentration upon the lord and at the time of death you certainly attain the supreme destination so is giving the final answer conclusive answer fix the supreme lord within your heart that way when you dying also you can remember him and go back to supreme destination go back to spiritual world he says supreme person to god is the ultimate controller he is the supreme shelter of all beings when we meditate upon when we meditate on supreme lord we about to, when we are about to die he reveals to them their own eternal spiritual identity our identity will be known to us spiritual identity will be known to us this is coming last couple of verses in this section in this chapter uh, he says although this is the most famous verse kalari dosha nide rajan asti hi eko mahan gunah kirtana deva krishnasya mukta sanga param rajet basically kaliyuga is an ocean of faults so many faults are there we discussed already there is still one great quality good quality in the kali yuga what is that simply by chanting the hari krishna maha mantra one can become free from material bondage and be promoted to the transcendental kingdom we can go back to spiritual world just by chanting the hari krishna maha mantra purport purport is comparing this to as a powerful king can kill number innumerable number of thieves one shot Similarly, one brilliant spiritual quality of Kali Yuga is able to destroy all the bad qualities by chanting the holy name, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. We can reach this the ultimate destination. So, the last verse for this today. So, this is the common verse that we hear regularly. Also, when somebody introduces to chanting, this is a common theme described. Actually, the verse goes: "Krite yad jayato Vishnu, treta yam yajato makai, makai." वापरे परिचर्यायाचर्यायाचर्यायाचर्यायाचर्यायाचर्यायाचर्यायाचर्यायाचर्यायाचर्यायाचर्यायाचर्यायाचर्यायाचर्यायाचर्यायाचर्यायाचर
Srimad Bhattam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. It's all for to all the devotees of the Lord. Pancha Kalpa Tarubesha Kupasandu Bevacha Padithana Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Nama Namaha. Thank you so much, devotees. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you.